So what I want to do now, take a bit of time to go through, is um, an analysis of the simplest possible quantum mechanical system one could possibly imagine. And that's what's called particle in a box. Um, you can kind, there are different ways to visualize it, all of which will be wrong. <laughs> um, let's see. Let me first draw a picture, and then I will try to explain how you might liken it to a particular system. So for this particle in a box picture, this is what you would imagine. Um, so you have a particle, you know, something like this, that has mass and something. So at, at a minimum, it has mass. We are not dealing with the photons. We are dealing with a particle that has mass. And it's in a, uh, I guess when we say box, really it's a quote unquote box. Because it, I guess it could be a literal box, but if you are actually trying to build an experiment, it wouldn't be a literal box. But um, so it's in a box in the sense that if you uh, if you have a particle, you may imagine in having some kinetic sorry not kinetic potential energy as a function of position, right? Yes. Um, so um, let's say where. In the middle of the box here, let's say this is where your potential energy would be zero. And as this particle moves around, its potential energy doesn't change. Almost like this ball rolling around in this, uh, on this table. But at some point, it encounters a barrier. As if there's a sudden potential jump if this particle tries to go from here to here. And in the idealized picture, you would say this potential goes to infinity once the particle tries to go beyond this point. Um, for, I don't know, sake of convenience, let's call this point uh, x equals 0. So if the particle were ever to be found in a negative x position, then it would have an infinite potential energy. And you know, that's not possible. So we would say, OK, the particle is never found here. Okay? And it is, so it's particle is bounded here. And if it's going to be a box, you have to have boundary at the other end too. So once again, what I'm plotting is kind of a potential energy of this particle as a function of position. As it's moving here, its potential energy isn't changing. We are saying that's equal to potential energy reference level, 0. But let's say at some point here, uh, let me call that x equals l. Some length L, after the particle travels some length L. So up to this point, potential energy is 0. But if the particle goes one step more, then its potential energy once again will approach infinity. Okay. So we call this particle in a box because it, that's a sort of the visualization of what it represents. Um, like imagine motion of a particle that's here. Let's say it has some kinetic energy. It would, uh, let's say, start by going to the left. When it encounters this wall, then there's, um, so what, however much kinetic energy it has, it's not going to be enough to climb this potential wall. So it'll get bounced back. And then here, the same thing will happen. It'll get bounced back, so it'll bounce back and forth. You can kind of imagine this, um, this ball that's bouncing back and forth between this, oh, wait. Bouncing back and forth, oh, I guess it's not elastic collision, so it's <laughs> not working out well. But you can imagine this kind of bouncing back and forth. Um, and in the list in the idealization where uh, this um, brass uh, ring is uh, indestructible, no matter how much kinetic energy this has, when it collides, it'll bounce back. But this is where I'm saying, um, it's kind of uh, difficult to visualize this correctly because um, so you might look at this and say, oh, but it's only a tiny step. Couldn't it just jump over like this? Um, which is actually not wrong. <laughs> so uh, maybe more realistic experimental scenario you should think of is you should think of this as being a charged particle. And imagine that it's moving in a region with a zero electric field. Except if it crosses over some boundary here, electric field goes to infinity. 
so that uh, the particle would barely penetrate this region and then be repelled back by the electric field that's pointing out. And the same thing happens at this wall. That's how you would build this wall. You would actually build it with an uh, electric field um, so that it's actually elastic collision and all that stuff. So this is the simplest quantum mechanical system we can imagine. Um, it's simplest because um, it's, uh, well, the interaction in this range is simple. Well, there is no interaction. There is no force. Like with that electric field example, um, in this region, there is no electric field. This is behaving like a free particle that is free to move around. No potential energy, no force, just whatever quantum mechanical thing it's doing. Right, and um, and um, somehow the setup is, is made so that this particle um, cannot spread out infinitely. It's confined within this region. Okay? So, with this setup in mind, we can ask these uh, key questions. Uh, let me split this question into two parts. A is what is smallest possible energy of M. Let me have you think about that for a little bit. And the second question, once we answer this, it would be, let me write it down now, what are allowed energies of M. 